with one of our incredible rebels, Mr. Ian Jeffs, who is a tech expert, specifically helping people with CRMs, websites, funnels, um, and also just helping a lot of really confused tech people unconfuse themselves when it comes to tech. How are you doing, Ian? Yeah, really good. Thanks. Happy to be here. Awesome to have you here. Um, I'm just gonna just gonna do the thing where I've got to share and talk at the same time. Um, let's practice this, guys. If you're watching this on the replay, drop us a hashtag replay. And if you're here with us live, um, let me know because you were speedy. Get a clicking on this. A quick clicker is what you are. Um, but yeah, let me know if you're if you're watching this on the replay. Drop me a hashtag replay. And I want to know as well what are your tech questions for Ian because I've got a job for you, Ian. You know, okay. keep a keep an eye on this um, on this live stream and um, answer any tech questions that people may have that come up um, in and around things because you are literally the resident rebellious business network tech wizard. Um, and the reason why we're using the word wizard is because Ian's business is called Digital Magic Solutions, which um, which means there's you know there's a bit of wizardry. Where did that come from? Why why magic? Why why have you got the magic theme? Nothing to do with being a wizard. Um, it, it came from a quote that I love that is, yeah. um, any suitably advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And I just really like that quote. So um, most, cool. yeah, most of the sort of really techy stuff that I do and the automations. And I mean, obviously, people are a bit more clued up with automations and AI and stuff these days. But um, a lot of what I do could appear to be magic to some people um and it certainly feels like it when you're you know something that you were doing that used to take you you know 30 minutes an hour just happens automatically all of a sudden that certainly feels quite magic as well when you when you get those sort of time savings yeah i mean that's cool i really like that phrase uh, that's, and it is a bit like that i mean it is absolute magic but also I agree with you it was so much harder years ago I mean I think some of the people coming into online business now thinking that it's hard I'm like oh my god you should have been here in 2017 I'm um, in fact 2015 I built my I tried to build my first website and it was I think I gave up after three months I just gave up <laughs> <laughs> do you remember your first website were you born with this like innate talent to, um, to just... I taught myself how to code websites in notepad just writing pure html um so yeah that's the geeky side of me so my first website probably came off the back of MySpace. remember when you used to have like your own bit that you could edit and like <laughs> add your own header and so I learned HTML code to do that and then I started building websites and then even age I think I was about 19 I built a website for someone they actually paid me um and then I went off to university and sort of stopped doing all that um and then went into the corporate world but since I've come back obviously everything's a hell of a lot easier now with page builders yeah. and you don't have to get involved with the code much anymore Oh, and if you do, we got ChatGPT to write it for us now as well, which is even better. <laughs> yeah, I haven't even been down that route yet. But I, I was watching an interview the other day, and and they they think that literally developers, coders, are going to be out of a job in the next five years because ChatGPT and other uh, generative chat models are just going to do it all for you and better with no mistakes. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of human error. Lots, lots of people thought AI was going to put the like the low skilled workers out of out of jobs, but actually it's going to put coders, artists, designers, yeah. all of these sort of people out of work first. So for coders, seeing as that is you, like where what, what do you think the pivot is for that? What's the pivot? Um, applied knowledge, I think, like the fact that you understand a business and you can see how the code could be applied rather than doing it yourself you're more of a project manager and an expert in you know i see your problem this is what i think the solution to the problem would be and then set the ai loose to to create yeah. the actual hard work so being the person that knows and understands ai and can set the ai loose as well as having that yeah knowledge. i mean i'm not i'm not much of a coder myself you know i i my background is in project management and IT management. And um, so I, I'm more of a bigger picture sort of person. So having a, an AI bot coming in and doing the coding is great for me because 
it's the bit that I hated doing anyway. <laughs> I just I just managed to get a comment to come on the screen. Like, how cool is that? But why is it over your yeah. face? Like, is there no way of making that not over your face? Well, anyway, I think <laughs> you'll have to do this. You're gonna have to be like I'll pump emu. my chair up you'll a bit. Yeah. A comment, just like do do an emu impression. Yeah, Kieran, I think that's a good point. It, you know, and then it will always need people to drive it potentially and, and spot its mistakes. But yeah. knowing it, having the knowledge of it, anyway, that's not what this is about. Let's 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 pull things back a little bit. So give everyone the overview. What specific tech problems do you help with? So I spend most of my time working with coaches and consultants and experts um, installing CRM and digital marketing systems, essentially. Mm -hmm. Most coaches and experts um, are really good at helping people, serving people. They know who their clients are. But what they struggle with is in the modern world is the techie side of their business. So. Mm websites emails autoresponders calendar links like and if you google how to do these things yeah sure you can find solutions calendarly is there you can get a crm system you can get all of these different bits of software and then you soon realize that you've got 10 different bits of software none of them really talk to each other properly uh, and you end up with just like a, a mess of zapier and like trying to get all these systems to talk to each other and um, I've got my own custom built CRM system that brings all of those tools together under one roof. It all just works. And I set it all up, implement it and, and, you know, it's sort of a done for you service. So, yeah. um, I'm just, yeah, I'm here to take that weight off people's shoulders. Now, obviously I do other things like build websites and search engine optimization and other sort of techie stuff, but the core of my business is really, um, simplifying how how coaches and experts go to market essentially taking that techie stress away from them so what stage do you think that's important then because obviously you know i mean i i don't think people need a website to get started you know you have your first few clients without having a website I and mean, we didn't even have an official website until we were well well over six figures um yeah. in sales so if, if that doesn't sort of prove that then i don't know what else will but what, at what stage do you think that people need to have that crm system have all those 10 bits of tech like are you talking about something from complete startup phase where that you're helping people with this or do you find that people are getting into a bit of a mess a, a few months down the road and then and then you're jumping in and helping them unpick and rebuild i mean i have i have worked with people who, who are literally just taking off with their business mm. um and like you say you don't need the website but realistically you do need a way of capturing email addresses and, and building an email list um and a way of delivering value to people, whether that's a free PDF or booking a, a discovery call or, you know, whatever you're doing as a, a sort of lead magnet to bring people into your world, you're going to need in a, in a digital business sense, you're going to need a way of underpinning that with technology. And, and that is where I can come in. Um, and then I've worked with more established businesses. Like you say, you've got an absolute mess of software. Yeah. Um, and then I will come in, and, and migrate everything into one central location that all just sort of works together. Um, and then I also work with businesses who are, are a lot more established, but then perhaps want to start setting up some evergreen elements to the business. So they want to have a coaching program, for example, and they want that to be delivered digitally online that people can either pay for or sign up for. And they're sort of leveraging their time by creating course content and products that they can sell that don't impact impact their time directly you know so you're really sort of leveraging your business and taking it to the next level where you're building those sort of evergreen or you know things that don't involve time input essentially so tell me look, i want to ask you a juicy question <laughs> what's like the most annoying thing you find because look i mean i've been a nurse working with elderly people I've also been a business coach working with startups and you know you gotta have a patience of a saint sometimes so when you get into people's systems get into their businesses and look at things what's like the number one bugbear of like oh no they've done that or oh gosh it's set up like this or oh no not again is there any things like that that drive you bonkers not, not that come to the top of my head I mean I've worked in IT for well over 20 years so I've got quite a lot of patience um <laughs> when it comes to people and their techie problems but uh 
What about the number one mistake you see people make that you have to rectify? People who think that they can run a whole business on a spreadsheet is probably oh, yeah. <laughs> one of my things. They're like, no, 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 it's all right. I've got it all on the spreadsheet. And you're like, okay, and that's where we're at. <laughs> yeah, okay. I hear that. So why can't you do that? Why can't you run your whole business on a spreadsheet? Oh, of course you can. But why would you want to when there are okay. ways that are either free or extremely cheap that can make your life significantly easier um, and remove single points of failure. You know, like you've got a, a spreadsheet on your computer, you, your computer hard drives wiped and then there goes your business, you know, it's, um, <laughs> or, or you get a corrupted file. We're not immune to these sort of things. So um, yeah, I, I I suppose that's the sort of IT manager background in me. I like to have redundancy. I like to have backups. I like, you know, and, and a lot of people are ignorant to those sort of things. You know, if you if you haven't been exposed to that in a business sense, you haven't ever dealt with corporate IT, then perhaps you wouldn't know that, you know, as a startup business, you need those sort of protections. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, right. So you've got someone, they've built their whole business on a spreadsheet. What should they do instead? I would suggest that everybody starts with some sort of CRM system. Yeah, yeah. You know, there are free options out there. And I think you you suggest people to start with Aweber. Mm -hmm. um, What's your favorite? My favorite is is high level, is mm -hmm. the, is what I build on top of. It's sort of a white label product. I used Aweber, it's great for just emailing. So if you want to build an email list, yeah. grow a list and contact that list, Aweber is perfect. But beyond that its capabilities are pretty limited so they are yeah it is you, a, it... yeah you can build landing pages in it but they're rubbish oh they're so rubbish <laughs> um, yeah i am i guess i am that person that's got i i would consider myself to be a software snob right <laughs> i i love my software like caroline's always teasing me of like when we get to this threshold you're gonna have a software budget so you can just go play and i'm like yeah i'm excited for that. i'm more excited for that than a lot of things actually i really am excited for that um but yeah i i like to have like all my different systems because that when i find that it's like a custom created platform like i just prefer it and it seems to be like I can't find the all-in-one solution that I absolutely love yet. But would you say that, I mean, I think the thing is, is that there are, and it is the biggest bugbear with Aweber. There's only so much you can do with it. That it's missing so much functionality. There isn't, there isn't things like I have to do my software, my, my um, here's a prime example, right? I've got my text messaging software over here and Aweber over here, and they don't speak to each other. So if someone unsubscribes from the list, they're still getting text messages, which is not very good. <laughs> so I need to like keep manually uploading lists of subscribed people to the, yeah. every time we run text messaging campaigns, it's a fresh list uploaded into the text message software just to make sure anyone that's unsubscribed is, is off. And then it's sort of a lot of manual process where I know that the system that you use has all of that built in. Someone unsubscribes, takes them off of everything, everything talks to each other and it probably would save me a hell of a lot of time the, yes. the, i just can't i can't walk away from convertry i just love it too much that's the one uh, that is probably my biggest um complaint with with high level is that the funnel builder isn't as good as convertry but mm. i don't think anything is yeah and i think that's very good that's the the whole benefit of having a niche product that it just specializes in one thing convertry mm. just does sales funnels and it it's the market leader, in my opinion. It's, I've never found anything that can match its capabilities. Yeah. But you pay for it, you know. You What you pay for that a month, you can have a whole CRM system that replaces Calendly, Aweber. And just have that. Yeah. Um, Twilio, you know, a, a phone dialer, a text messenger. Uh, it, it replaces everything, you know, for the same price. So, you know, you, you get what you pay for with Convertry. Um, but it's catching up, you know, it won't it, high level has got so much money being invested in it that, and it's so popular that it is catching up. Like every, every week there's new updates going out. So it's it won't be mental, like, isn't it? How fast things are growing. What do you think? Like, what, what would you say the current trends are then? Like, what's the, what's the things that we need to know? We need to know. Cause obviously there's rapid evolution of tech happening at the moment. Like, 
What yeah. upcoming trends should we pay, be paying attention to in, in this tech world that we are in? Also, shout out to um, Nicola Current. Uh, Nicola Page, sorry. I haven't seen you in ages, Nicola. Big love to you. So Ian is an IT whiz. Love working with Ian. Um, I, I spend a lot of time working with Nicola at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I miss Nicola. I haven't seen her in ages. We need to catch up, Nicola. Um, yeah, go on. Tell us. What are the, what are the trends? The trends, obviously, AI. Everything's got AI plugged into it. So if you haven't got a prompt builder in, in what you're doing, then it's probably not, not on trend. Um, whether that's a, an image generator or a whole page generator or whatever. Um, the other thing that seems to be very popular is multi-channel marketing. So you are not just emailing people, you're text messaging people. Mm -hmm. You're, you can, the, I have the facility to leave voicemail messages. So it doesn't even ring. It just drops a voicemail okay. on, a, on, a, on a phone. So that sort of you multi listen to their voicemail though. D -d I, I mean, know, I, don't, I don't use it because that was my thought exactly. Yeah, I caught up on mine last night and there were messages from like February that I hadn't even heard. Of my wow. mum going, Cordelia. I was like, oh, sorry, yeah. ma'am. I just assume, that, yeah, I just assume it's like sales calls or whatever when, when people ring me. Anyone who knows me sends me a WhatsApp. So. Yeah, exactly. But that's right. the other thing. It was a WhatsApp integration as well, being able to drop messages into WhatsApp from a nice. CRM system and, and integrating it into a... Um, uh, a workflow so this is one of the things that i love the most is building automations and workflows that um detach your time and your brain power from your marketing process so you know if somebody signs up for something or somebody clicks a particular button or takes an action within your ecosystem that there is going to be a whole follow-up series of actions that it's just managed for you. It's all automated. So you know someone signs up for your lead magnet PDF. For the next two weeks, they're getting an email every single day where you're introducing them to your world. I, I call it an indoctrination sequence. So indoctrination. You know, yeah, I mean, you're just bringing them into your world. So you've got like, um, here's my best blog article. You yeah. should go and watch this video. You mm. should go and watch this interview that I did with Cordelia. <laughs> uh, <laughs> here's another resource that you can download. Here's a free video series that I've got for you. Mm. Um, maybe offer a tripwire product, like a really low value product. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you know that all of this is happening automatically. You're not having to get directly involved with the process. And that and that's what I'm in love with at the moment is how, how you can sort of get the most out of these sort of automations without, um, you know, it's sort of like a set and forget. You set it up once and then you're hands off. You don't have to worry about it. Obviously, you, know, you have to review things. But I think um, leverage is such a buzzword recently, and that is like ultimate leverage. You know, you sort of you build these things and, and you know that they're like a little worker going off for you in the background. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's just it, it makes it so much easier. But having said that, the setup can be a right like boggle. I mean, we have so many people in the Rebellious Business Network and people that be watching this interview that struggle with the tech. Like they just feel overwhelmed by it. It stresses them out, it freaks them out. Um, and they just feel like that is a, a massive thing that holds them back from online business in general. Um, what would you say to those guys? Like, how how can we how can we make this easier for them and demystify or you know defog the the kind of the the, the tech brain fog that descends upon a lot of us? Um, two routes. First one, either give me a call and let me do it for you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, or, or two, start start with like pigeon steps, little baby steps, like what um what can you do what one thing can you do like just do one thing a week get one thing working at a time so start at the front like where do you first interact with your potential clients is that them taking a, a booking a call with you or is that them taking a pdf from you or what you know whatever your lead magnet is can you automate that great what's the next step okay can you send them a week's worth of emails automatically. That's your next step. What's your next step after that? Can you then um, offer 
a free a, another freebie to them or you know in in your world do you have a tribe magnet can you automate your weekly emails going out for that can you build templates so that you don't have to retype everything every time so that that would be my my, my advice would be small steps because yeah that's the point of leverage is you build these things once and then they continue to work for you every time thereafter so you only have to get one little thing right each time and then they all just stack on top of each other so it's you know it sounds like you're saying we we start installing the tech when we get to optimization and so we get to optimization from testing something live manual you know are people interested in this does it work once we've got kind of wheels turning things moving it's about going right how can i start to automate this so there isn't so much manual horsepower going and then mm. in doing that you just do one thing at a time but it's still really overwhelming to say okay well I've got people that are showing an interest in, let's say, um, a live event that I'm running. I'm running this webinar. People are coming along to it. But all I've been doing is sharing the Zoom link on social media. So how can I start getting those people on an actual email list? That that is that first one is quite a jump, isn't it? So, yeah. for, and, and I, I do feel that people aren't list building or people aren't getting started with that because they're just overwhelmed with where to start, like what to do. So let's let's just lay down five steps. Okay. Five steps. What do you do? I'm running a live event. I've got a Zoom link. I'm sharing it on social media, but I want these people on my email list. Give First step is don't share the Zoom link. <laughs> I get the, porn bombed. I get porn bombed. <laughs> yeah. Well, you also you're also immediately giving people away to 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 Zoom, and then you're requiring yourself to make more work to then export that data from zoom into somewhere else where you can use it so my first step would be to set up a landing page for your event with all the details and a place where people can put their name and email address to sign up mm -hmm. two benefits from that is a you're building a list and b you've got full control over the real estate you can make that landing page look and feel how you want you can share all the information and the, the, the additional benefit of that is when people go onto your list by signing up, you can then tag them as they were interested in this event at this time. Mm -hmm. You can then send those people the Zoom link and you can send them reminders and all of that can be automated. So you don't then have to worry about each of these individual people who are signed up for your event, you know that automatically they're all getting reminders and, and invitations, et cetera. But you've built a list at the same time. So, and you've tagged these people with an interest code that says they, they were interested in this particular live event I did, which then, you know, like you were saying, you start to generate information about who's interested in what and what was your best promotion, what was your best offer. Yeah, awesome. So, let's just give those five steps a word each just as a summary okay. landing page sign up form tagging people in a list automated reminders and event link and if that completely overwhelms you then reach out to Ian and have a chat because this is what yeah. he does and he'll help you with all of it. Um, Nicola's saying, absolutely let Ian do it for you if you can. What would take me days and a laptop launched through the window <laughs> takes in a couple of hours, uh, takes in a, it takes Ian a couple of hours. It, oh, she's in A. I think I was supposed to say Ian a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ian has saved myself and our team hours of manual input. So much time is freed up to focus on growth. The return on investment in this type of software is huge. Well, I think that says it all, Ian. Um, yeah. There's my advert. <laughs> how, can people, how can people reach out to you if they need some support with the tech? Um, the best place is just to just to book a call. Let's you know, let's have a chat. Um, Drop me a link. I think you were going to drop me a link. I can't find it anywhere. I so. didn't send it to you. Okay. It's, in, it's in our chat, in our private chat now. Right. So I am going to drop this link into everywhere, I think. Well, yeah. let me just, let me do it manually for Facebook, manually for YouTube, manually for Instagram. I don't know if you can click links in Instagram lives. If not, just um, 
let it's me know and I'll give it to you. Cool.digitalmagicsolutions.com forward slash cool hyphen with hyphen. You can see that because I've dropped it in the chat. I just don't know if they yeah. can click on it. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, we can go one further, actually. Let's stick it in a QR code. Um, Ooh, fancy. Yeah, we'll stick a QR code in the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the label cool Ian. Is this some new um, software that you've got? QR I love it. I'm loving it. I'm genuinely loving it. It's my new bit of shiny software that Caroline let me get. <laughs> um, there you go call Ian up there yeah, um, you might cool. need to, if you're watching this on your phone you might just need to screenshot this live so that you can click it I don't I've, I always get you know you know you know we were talking earlier about things that frustrate you about people with tech mine is people sharing QR codes in images on social media and I'm like now what yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at this on my phone what do you expect me to yeah. do with this okay now I've got to screenshot the QR code and get it into images and then oh honestly so yeah i'm being that person right now um and i'm also just going to manually go over and find us on linkedin and drop us in drop it in there as well um so that everybody everywhere should hopefully have access to the link to booking with ian ian is there any final words that you want to share with the rebels don't get stressed by tech like embrace it it doesn't come naturally to everyone but once these things are set up, they work for you and they don't have, they don't, they shouldn't be stressful. They don't have to be stressful. So yeah, um, embrace the technology. Embra embrace the technology. Yeah. We, can we just end on that quote that you, that caused you to name your, ba your business digital magic solutions? Cause I loved it. Um, what, what is it? Oh yeah. Any, any suitably advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. I love that so much. Yeah. Guys, we've been live with Ian Jeffs, Rebellious Business Networks, resident resident tech expert, or one of our resident tech experts. Um, but yeah, it's been great to have you. It's been fun. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, reach out to Ian if you need some support with getting this done for you. Um, and we will see you in the network very soon um, on video somewhere because we always are live. So I'll see you at some point. Lots and lots of love, guys. Thanks, Ian. Thank you so much.